Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah. Welcome uh, to our webinar today uh, on the best days of the year. Uh, we're joined, we're very honored to have with us uh, Imam Islam, Sa'ad, who we all know very well, a very dear and beloved brother and Imam to us. Uh, so we're glad that he's here with us, inshallah. So we will uh, have an opportunity to ask questions. Uh, so as we go throughout the program, feel free to use the Q&A feature to enter your questions there. And we will monitor those and have time at the end uh, to answer any questions about Dhul Hijjah, uh, li- really starting with the subject, inshallah, first. So before we do that, I wanted to make a couple of uh, quick announcements. Some of you may have seen this information in the community meeting. As you remember, the masjid, this is what it used to look like. You know, while we're all away, I know we're all sad and missing the masjid. There's been a lot of work going on uh, while we are away. Um, So this is kind of a before picture, and this is an after picture. Alhamdulillah. Uh, Alhamdulillah. Inshallah, Imam Islam, we look forward to you coming and, uh, you know, in being in person and giving the khutbah with us. Uh, So this is the new look. You can see the new carpet, the new paint. Um, and all of this, uh, the carpet was selected by uh, the community. We sent out a survey and it was the fastest responses to any survey we've ever sent. We got maybe a hundred responses within the first hour. So there's a lot of excitement about uh, the carpet being changed. So Jazakumullah khair for those of you who are involved with that and also for you, your generous support through the donations and helping us uh, fund and, and cover these changes. So inshallah, when we all get back, we'll come back to a refreshed, Masjid with new carpet, new paint, and inshallah, some new other changes uh, as well. Um, in terms of programs for Dhul Hijjah, um, inshallah, we have, of course, today's webinar, but then we will also be releasing a video series um, by Sheikh Omar Suleiman every day on our Facebook page. So you want to go to our Facebook page and subscribe mm-hmm. or like our page to see that. We'll be releasing one each day. And then also, um, we have a group of sisters who have put together a really fantastic set of resources for our children in terms of activities and crafts and resources. So each day they have something uh, planned that you can do with your children, inshallah, of different ages. Uh, A link to those uh, activities will be sent on our e-newsletter and our WhatsApp groups. And if you're not subscribed to those, please go to our website, icbcs.org, and you can uh, join those programs from there. So with that, I want to hand it off to... uh, our dear brother Saeed, uh, to recite uh, some verses from Quran, from Surah Al-Baqarah, as 197 to 199. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحج أشهر معلومات فمن فرض فيهن الحج فلا رفث ولا فسوق ولا جدال في الحج وما تفعلوا من خير يعلمه الله وتزودوا Oh, 
Zakallah khair, Brother Saeed, uh, for those beautiful recitation of those verses. Uh, with that, inshallah, I will hand it off uh, to Imam Islam uh, to continue, inshallah. Barakallahu feek. Assalamu uh, alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Salatu wa salamu ala rasulullah. Ashraf al-anbiya wa al-mursaleen. Allahumma allimna ma yanfa'una wa anfa'na ima allamtana. Uh, we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the peace and blessings be upon his messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We ask Allah to shower us with his mercy and to shower us with his benevolence and bounty. Alhamdulillah, it's very good uh, to be with you all, uh, even if it is virtual. Inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala connects our hearts uh, in reality, that through perhaps what we cannot see with our physical eyes, that we can feel with our hearts, the connection to the believers, the connection to Islam and Muslims all over the world, and even to the believers who have come before us. As we say in the Salah, Assalamu alayka ayyuhan nabi wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Assalamu alayna wa ibadillah salihin. So we give the greetings to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as the first and primary one amongst the believers. And then to the rest of the believers, we also give the greetings. So this is how we can connect. It's through the greeting of Salam, through the greeting of Ta'aruf and getting to know uh, each other, to love each other for the sake of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So not only to know Allah and to love Allah, but to know one another and to love one another. So I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring our hearts together, even in the midst of our social distancing, that our hearts are not distant uh, from each other. So alhamdulillah, we have the month of Ramadan. You said, what? What do you mean? Why did he say the month of Ramadan? When we say that, everybody gets excited and gets prepared. But now we have the month of Dhul Hijjah, which... The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, he said, Afdurul Ayyam said, the best days, as the title of the seminar, the best days of the year are the first 10 of Dhul Hijjah. And if you want to narrow it down further, he said, the best day of the year is Yawm al Nahr, which is the 10th day of Dhul Hijjah. So it's all culminating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgiving and freeing and emancipating people from the hellfire. On the day of Arafat, leading into the celebration of, for example, a person who has committed sins all year long, they come to the day of Arafat, they're forgiven their sins, then they celebrate almost as if they're entering into Jannah already. They're celebrating on the day of Eid. This is why it's the greatest day of the year, right? Because it's a celebration of having repented to Allah and having done the good deeds in the previous nine days, celebrating on the 10th day. And then the next best day after that, according to the hadith, after Yawm al-Nahr, is Yawm al-Qar. Yawm al-Qar is the 11th day of the hijjah which is when a person is in 
uh, the outskirts of Mecca in Mina, and they are uh, stoning the different pillars uh, for the next few days. So in this way, we have amongst us, or we have coming before us, what we need to take advantage of and opportunity for. So the hadith of Ibn Abbas radiallahu anh, مَا مِنْ أَيَّامٍ الْعَمَلُ الصَّالِحِ This is the beginning of the hadith, that there are no days in which righteous action. So the days are beloved to Allah, and the action in those days is even more accentuated in terms of the love of Allah. So let's pause a little bit to reflect. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He loves certain actions, He loves certain individuals, certain people, He loves certain categories. So how do we best attain the love of Allah? This is from the Hadith Qudsi of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When he said, begins, مَنْ عَادَ Whoever takes as an enemy someone who is a wali of mine. How does a person attain the status of wali? To be a close friend of Allah. So the best way to start is with the fara'id. Start with the obligatory prayer. So yes, we should get excited about the first days of Al-Hijjah. So I'm going to fast. But those fasts are voluntary. Even the fast of Arafah is a voluntary fast. It's not an obligatory fast. So what should be the priority? You should say, am I praying the five obligatory prayers on time? Am I getting up for Fajr before sunrise? Praying Dhuhr in its time, Asr in its time, Maghrib in its time, Salatul Isha in its time. And so we start there. That's the foundation. We don't want to start with window dressing and cosmetic accentuation. We want to start with the foundational practices that are expected of us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this would include rituals, but also relationships. What are our obligations to our parents, to our spouses, to our children, to our community? Fulfilling those basic requirements of having a mas'uliyya, having a responsibility. As the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said, kullukum mas'ul. Each and every single one of you is accountable. The word literally means will be asked. So every single human being who has reached the age of puberty will be asked. The husband, the father, the mother, the wife, the brother, the sister, the employer, the employee, the manager, the leader, the emir, they'll all be asked and they're all accountable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is why the first 10 days of Al-Hijjah is a time to concentrate on am I fulfilling, first of all, the basic amal al salih the basic obligation. For example, sadaqah. We all want to give sadaqah. But do we know that the best sadaqah that we can give, the best that we can spend, is what we spend on our own families? Or is my family being taken care of? That's an obligation. So once a person is taking care of the ritual obligations, and which we call the ritual obligations, we call them the ibadat. As you know, in fiqh we have division of ibadat and mu'amalat, of the acts of worship and the acts of daily intercourse and interaction. So it said, when a person is fulfilling their ibadat, the fara'id, and their mu'amalat, their social responsibility as well. Because we need to remember we have social responsibility. So there's a lot going on in the world today. Um, many people are talking about the systemic racism uh, here in the United States uh, and racism uh, in general throughout the world. So you might think, well, what does this have to do with the hijjah Well, does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala love justice? Does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala love working towards justice? The answer to both of those is yes, of course. So what better time 
than to say I will focus on improving a situation that has to do with social justice or has to do with uh, inequality and I will work on those things for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this again changes our perspective so that it's not only the prayer which is important even the Qiyamul Layl in the first 10 nights of the Hijjah because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said well, Fajr wa layalin ashr said by dawn and by the 10 nights. So Ibn Kathir said those 10 nights are the 10 nights of the Hijjah. So yes, get up and pray to Hajjud, especially in those 10 nights. Fast the days as much as you can, especially the day of Arafah, for it expiates the year's previous sins and the year to come's sins. So the idea here is not to limit it to the foundation, but to build on that foundation. So from the Salah, from the Quran, from the Siyam, we come out of it into society and we make a difference in society. That we are not hermits. Our religion does not teach us to seclude ourselves other than of course when you're doing the i'tikaf, that's a different story, it's only 10 days out of the year. But it doesn't teach us to become hermits and just resign ourselves to uh, a cave somewhere. No, we need to engage society. Now, of course, we can engage society more virtual uh, platforms and more virtual pla platforms. But in any case, to engage the world with amal al-salih, with all kinds of good works, all kinds of good deeds. Right? So those are the worship, ibadat, and then there's the mu'amalat, which is how you interact with one another. So starting with your own family, so it's thinking about what is a good deed for day one, for day two, for day three, or a good deeds that will build up in those 10 days towards my family. Will I sit down with them and we will learn something of the Quran? Will I sit down with them and just enjoy quality time of being with my family, giving them the attention, hearing them, discussing their problems? This is with intentionality becomes worship with the niyyah the amal becomes ibadah so niyyah plus amal equals ibadah equals worship of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just by making an intention a sincere intention of course and doing that action especially if it's a ritual worship in conformity with the sunnah of the prophet muhammad وسلم, and if it is non-ritual action doing it in the best way that you can do it then it becomes worship of allah subhanahu ta'ala and so that's the key is in these 10 days to really take it to heart i will make every single moment a moment of worship Qul inna salati wa nusuki wa mahyaya wa mamati lillahi rabbil alameen Say my life, my death. Before that, before life and death, my prayer, my service of sacrifice. So when you make the udhiyah, which you all inshallah should make the intention to make the udhiyah, which will be slaughtered on the 10th day after Eid, or could be 11th or 12th, or even have some said uh, even as far as 13th. But that action is done for Allah salati wa nusuki mahyaya wa mamati my life and my death are all for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so I would recommend that not just scheduling some people they get really caught up in scheduling and planning okay, I'm going to do this I'm going to do this I'm going to do that but internally purifying the intention right because if a person is going to do amal without being in a process of tathir, in a process of purification, then they may undermine or even negate their action if they're not purifying themselves, purifying their characters, or their character, sorry. So to purify their character as well, their khuluq, because the heaviest on the scale 
asked her, of course, La ilaha illallah, heaviest on the scale on the day of judgment, will be khuluq, will be character. How you deal with other people. Khaluqin nas bi khuluqin hasan. When you deal with people, deal with them in a beautiful, refined manner with a sublime and elevated ethic and character. So again, if a person is doing the foundation, they need to go to the next level, which is the nawafil, that which is beyond the fara'id al-ayn, well, then the next after fara'id al-ayn, which is the individual obligation on each person, then fara'id al-kifaya, what is the social responsibility, and then going to the nawafil, going to the voluntary and optional. Once a person is on that path and they taste the sweetness of working for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then it's at that moment that Allah loves that person. And when Allah loves the person, Allah guides that person to all that is good and to doing more and more good deeds. So those 10 days should be an outpouring from them into the rest of the year. And these are the best days and nights, even better than the last 10 nights of Ramadan, with the exception of Laylatul Qadr. Because Laylatul Qadri, khayrun min alfi shahr. That the night of Laylatul Qadr is better than worshiping Allah for uh, a thousand months, more than a thousand months. So, in any case, we as Muslims, as believers in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are on a journey to Him, which is what Hajj is about. Hajj is about the journey to Allah and responding to the call of Allah through the voice of Prophet Ibrahim alayhisalam. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded Ibrahim alayhisalam, invite the people to the Hajj. Invite the people to make the pilgrimage. What do we say when we are going? I know this year we cannot go from outside of Saudi Arabia, but what do we say when we are going? With our hearts first, before our tongues, I'm responding to you, Allah. Labbaik Allahumma labbaik. How beautiful is that? There's a call from the beloved. And the lover is responding, I'm coming. SubhanAllah. It's a very beautiful expression. Labbaik Allahumma labbaik. Labbaik la sharika laka labbaik. That I love only you. And I'm leaving everything behind. I'm leaving dunya behind to come to you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I'm coming to you along with millions or hundreds of thousands of other believers coming all to you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inna alhamda wa ni'mata laka wal mulk la sharika la. So let us embrace these 10 days that the Prophet, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, has stated they are the best 10 days of the year. Let us, yes, plan for those 10 days with good deeds. How much Quran will I recite? I will get up for tahajjud. I will fast which days. I will give sadaqah. Try to enter from all the doors of eternal bliss. Don't limit yourself to one door. Be like Abu Bakr Siddiq who in the morning when he came for fajr, he had already, before even praying Salat al-Fajr, he had already visited a sick person, followed in a janazah, given sadaqah. Now he's also praying Fajr. So why is that? He wants to open multiple entries into eternal bliss, into Jannah. So that he can be called when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is calling him. When he says, Labbaik Allahumma Labbaik, he can come from any of the doors to enter and to go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and towards Allah through all kinds of good action and good behavior. Not only being called from the door of ar rayyan but also the door of sadaqah, also the door of salah, the door of jihad, 
So this is the idea of al-amal al-salih. Don't limit it. Make it a diversified portfolio, if you will, of investment. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the fund manager for you. He will grow it for you. But we have to make that initial investment of action, not just of hopes and aspirations, but of real practical difference making in this world. Starting with tasbih and tahleel and tahmeed and takbir, because it purifies us. Subhanallah, alhamdulillah, la ilaha Allah, Allahu Akbar. Specifically for these days, uh, as we begin to come to, to a conclusion, specifically for these days, to say Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, la ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, wa lillahi alhamd. Starting from Fajr of the uh, first day of Dhul Hijjah, we start it, uh, we don't do it in terms of muqayyad, meaning after every prayer until we reach the day of Arafah. When we reach the day of Arafah, we do after each prayer from Fajr of Arafah until the Asr of the 13th. So we're expecting Arafah to be on Thursday, July 30th, inshallah ta'ala. This is the expectation. We'll see the announcement on uh, Tuesday, inshallah. Um, or actually we will see the announcement uh, either Monday or Tuesday, depending on which calendar you will, you're looking at. But we will know most likely uh, the first day of Dhul Hijjah will be on Wednesday. So that means that the ninth day is on Thursday of the following week, July 30th. Then July 31st would be Yawm al-Nahr, which is on the 10th day. So we make tahleel, takbir, tahmeed, we do sadaqah, we read Quran, give charity. But don't forget the activism as well. The activism in society, in community, for education, for reformation of society, for improvement of people's well-beings. Even subhanAllah, you know, bringing happiness to a Muslim family. Say, okay, I'm going to think of what kind of good deeds I can do. One of the good deeds I'm going to do, I'm going to just make a family happy with a visit. Well, nowadays it's difficult to visit, but maybe with an email or with a text or with uh, a video conference that I will bring some kind of happiness into another person's life. Uh, Alhamdulillah, uh, some of the dear brothers and families in College Station, uh, you know, they, they are so generous, they're so nice, but show that to the people around you, let them experience it firsthand uh, from your own family and then the families around you. That is also amal al-salih and is also good deeds. So the key takeaway from all of this is make your intention sincere by turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, purifying yourself, and then get busy. Don't let a moment of these 10 days pass without being busy with something. Even when I am sleeping, my intention is I'm sleeping so that I can recharge, so I can get up for tahajjud for qiyamul layl. So there should be an intensity of these 10 days that I am busy with working for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah bless you. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us that we reach these 10 days full of iman, full of vitality and energy, enthusiasm, and that we are not discouraged uh, by uh, anything environmental around us or anything which may undermine us from within, from our own demons internally. So we seek refuge with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the evil within and from the evil without so that we can ascend to the loftiest of levels with him. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless you and bless your family. Hey, barakallah feek, jazakallah khair, Imam Islam. I uh, want to thank you for those beautiful words and important reminders. Uh, wanted to uh, take some time now to answer any questions. Um, if you are watching on YouTube, you can enter it in the chat over there, or you can use the Q&A feature here in the box.
So Imam Islam, maybe we can start with this and we will give some people some time to process. Sure. What advice would you have to those who had the intention to make Hajj this year and were unable to do so? And the second part of that is what advice would you have for those who are aspiring to go to Hajj? And what should they be thinking about during these 10 days and making those preparations? Sure, inshallah. So if a person had the intention to make Hajj um, and they had the real preparation uh, in order to make the Hajj, then due to circumstances, we're not able to make Hajj. They are rewarded as if they have made Hajj. So it doesn't mean that their Hajj obligation uh, has been completed, but the reward of the Hajj uh, is received and is given to them by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they are not to be uh, in despair or in sadness, but rather they accept the qada and qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but that money, that $10,000 or $9,000, whatever it may be, depending on the deluxe package or the VIP package or whatever package, that money, um, I would recommend giving, maybe not all of it because you might want to save for the next year, but giving a good portion of it in some kind of charitable uh, organization or message it, something that you are saying I wanted to use this money originally for taqarrub ila Allah, for getting close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now I will try to get close to Allah with this money through sadaqah, um, through some kind of charitable uh, venture that I will engage in. So that's what I would recommend is take from that money of hajj and use it in charity uh, as well. For a person who's aspiring to make hajj, prepare. Prepare financially, yes. Prepare in terms of your health, a lot of walking, yes. Prepare yourself mentally, some stressful situation with uh, complications and logistics and other things. Prepare yourself to be calm. And to, but the most important preparation is prepare to receive the light of Allah in your heart. So the heart needs to be cleansed and purified and polish continuously. And the cleaner our hearts are, the sweeter the experience and the more palpable the experience will be of performing the Hajj. Because sometimes a person may perform Hajj and they don't feel anything. It's like I'm just doing all of these empty rituals. We don't want that kind of Hajj. We want the Hajj where a person when they see the Kaaba the tears come to the eyes. The type of hajj, when they help their fellow pilgrim, they receive a smile of gratitude. We want the hajj that when they come back, they do not fall again into sins and are resolved to be a better Muslim or better Muslimah. So how does all of that work? It starts with the heart. أَلَا إِنَّ فِي الْجَسَدِ مُضْغَةِ إِذَا صَلُحَتْ صَلُحَ الْجَسَدُ كُلُّهُ وَإِذَا فَسَدَ الْجَسَدُ كُلُّهُ There is a morsel in the body. So this is figurative and metaphorical here. If it is good, the whole body is good. So all of these amal salih, what's necessary for the body is the heart. Heart is the niya al khalisa, the pure intention. Then everything else will be good because that intention and that heart has been cleansed and purified. So we can't overestimate uh, or overemphasize, let us say, we cannot overemphasize the work of purification, tasqiyah to nafs, uh, to be able to receive the light from Allah in these uh, special rituals and special days. Okay, Jazakallah khair. Let's see if uh, there are any other questions. Thank you, Imam Islam. They're taking it easy on you today. No, <laughs> they're not a whole lot of questions. So I think uh, maybe we, we will leave it there. If I can just end with a couple of uh, important announcements that we made at the community meeting. Uh, as uh, Imam Islam said, Dhul Hijjah is right around the corner. Eid al Adha is expected to be on uh, Friday, July 31st. Uh, because of the, you know, the governor's uh, regulations and obviously the, the situation with the, the pandemic, 
uh, in Texas and, in, and locally, uh, particularly in Bryan College Station, uh, we'll be again, uh, sad to say, having a virtual Eid al-Adha, just like we did in Eid al-Fitr. Um, but we will have takbirat and Eid khutbah posted online on YouTube and Facebook. And we will also be doing a Eid drive through from 11.30 to 1 p.m. Uh, at the masjid. So we encourage you guys to all participate in that. I know that's not the uplifting news that we were all hoping to hear, but unfortunately we are you know, operating out of the, the, the conditions that we're in and trying to be safe uh, for, for all of us. May Allah SWT protect all of you and your families. Um, also, I mentioned the, the, the activities for the, the kids. So we have a 10 day uh, schedule here um, and you can see at the bottom the link, it's a bit.ly link slash DH for Dhul Hijjah uh, dash activity. So if you go to that link, you will see a Google Drive folder uh, for each of these days. There's a folder and you'll have links for all of these things. So nice videos. Uh, it's a very diverse set of activities, crafts, a Dhul Hijjah planner book. So feel free to use those, take advantage of those and share those uh, with um, your friends and family, inshallah. And lastly, um, we will continue to do virtual programs through the, throughout the rest of the year. Um, we will likely be virtual for the rest of the year for our halaqahs and things like that. So if you have any topics and speakers that you'd like to see, feel, feel free to email us at education at icbcs.org. We're always looking for suggestions. And uh, we will also be having some community meetings, inshallah, to discuss some important issues in the community, specifically our future growth plans and the uh, annual board elections that will be coming up in September, inshallah. Uh, we hope that all of you will participate. Again, Jazakumullah Khair for joining. Jazakumullah Khair Imam Islam for investing your time with us. We really appreciate you and, and may Allah SWT reward you for your time and, and give us the strength to follow uh, the best of your words, inshallah. With that, we'll close. Imam Islam, if I can ask you to just close us out, inshallah, Jazakumullah Khair. Jazakumullah Khair and subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Nashadu Allah ilaha ila ant. نستغفرك ونتوب إليك اللهم تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم وصلى الله على محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والحمد لله رب العالمين والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. لكم الله خير السلام عليكم.